I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Morano to come back and share her personal story, but not yet. Uh, because I want to share more about Dr. Morano, and uh, I want you to know a little bit more about her. Um, she's quite an extraordinary woman. She's truly a champion of hunger fighters around the globe. What you may not know, that uh, she uh, fleed with her family at a very young age, at the age of two, during turmoil and civil war. And she's truly um, a symbol of the American dream. Upon moving to Miami at the age of 14, she barely spoke English. But like many other exceptional women, her mother focused on the power of education. Dr. Murano would eventually go on to become the first woman, the first Hispanic American, and one of the youngest people to be named president of Texas A&M University, and a very passionate Aggie. In 2012, she took on the role of director of the Norman Borlaug Institute for the International Agriculture and Development at Texas A&M. More than anything, she's a champion of education. And like Dr. Borlaug, she has a strong focus on inspiring the next generation of agricultural innovators. Please welcome my friend, a member of our World Food Prize Council of Advisors, Dr. Morano. And Dr. Morano, I'm really going off script here because I never thought I'd say this. I'm a UT Austin grad, but gigam Aggies. You know, Aggies and Longhorns, if, if you know the, the rivalry, but it's, it's an amazing relationship. We really are sisters, so. Well, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here today with all of you uh, honoring international women farmers and the great work that they have done and continue to do. Now, as we have heard, uh, yesterday was Dr. Norman Borlaug's birthday. He would have been 110 years old, as you heard, if he still were here with us. And frankly, in my opinion, he was so resilient and perseverant that I'm convinced that if it hadn't been for cancer, he would be with us here today at 110. I'm, I'm positive. Well, I first met the good Dr. Borlaug um, when my husband and I became faculty members at Texas A&M University uh, almost 30 years ago. We had started our careers at Iowa State University, so Dr. Borlaug was a very well-known hero uh, to us. So anyway, when we got to Texas A&M, I learned uh, pretty soon that Dr. Borlaug was teaching part-time there. He had retired. He was living in Dallas, so he was coming down to Texas A&M campus every so often to teach. I couldn't believe it. So I went to a lecture that he was giving to some food science students one evening and was absolutely blown away by his determination and incredible knowledge of the challenges and opportunities embedded in, in food security. So I got to interact with him, uh, and one day, we both were at a luncheon on campus, and as we sat next to each other, he asked me, so, Dr. Morano, what do you do here at Texas A&M? And so I proudly said, I'm a microbiologist, a food safety expert, Dr. Borlaug, to which he responded, so what do you do that helps people directly? So I said, well, I conduct research on foodborne pathogenic organisms. And he said, yeah, but that's you in the lab. What do you do that helps people directly? So then I said, well, I present the results of my research at scientific meetings. There are people there. He said, yeah, but that's other scientists like you. What do you do that helps people directly? So then I thought about it. I said, well, I teach. Those are people right? Students. And says, yeah, but you're teaching them to be like you. What do you do that helps people directly? So I finally said, well, nothing, Dr. Borlaug, okay? And he looked up at me with a big smile on his face, pointing his finger at me and said, it's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to all of us to help people directly. And I never forgot it. 
Well, he and I became uh, really good friends. I was absolutely proud to know him and to have him be almost my grandpa, to be honest with you. A very smart, humble, and absolutely loving grandpa. So over the years, I got to interact quite a bit with him, go to events with him, such as when he was given the Presidential Medal of Science by President George W. Bush, the Congressional Medal. I was with him at USDA when they celebrated his 90th birthday. Well, it was a very wonderful but long day. We were visiting members of Congress, me and Dr. Borlaug, going to a ceremony with lots of great speakers at USDA. So by the end of the day, I was pooped. So I asked Dr. Borlaug if he was ready to go to the hotel, you know, so we could get some rest, to which he replied, actually, I need to get on my way to the airport. I'm flying to Africa tonight uh, to meet with several heads of state about how to improve the policies, Didi, to help farmers have access to inputs and infrastructure. So he was tireless. At age 90, he was ready to keep going. Well, years later, when he was diagnosed with cancer, um, I went to see him at his home in Dallas, knowing that it would be the last time. And so there he was, already in hospice, yet all he was thinking about was the work. He said to me, and I'll never forget it, Elsa, don't let the dream die. So, no pressure, Norm, thanks, okay? Uh, he clearly was very much thinking about all that still needed to be done to help smallholder farmers, men and women farmers around the developing world. And little did I know that just three years after that, after he passed, I would be leading the Borlaug Institute at Texas A&M, working hand in glove with our faculty, our students, uh, experts around the world to continue his legacy. Well, one of the main teachings that he imparted on me and on us was that science can be used to prevent conflict and other situations that negatively affect people, such as the need to migrate in search for a way to survive. Well, we certainly put this to good use when we implemented a project funded by USAID in Central America, where we introduced a disease-resistant coffee variety that helped restore production of this very, very important crop we trained over 22,000 farmers, including over 5,000 women, in climate-smart coffee production practices using this new coffee hybrid. And I can tell you that we have video testimonials of farmers telling us, as they were harvesting their crop, I don't have to leave now. That's how you do it. You help people help themselves. Another teaching of Dr. Borlaug was applying a multidisciplinary approach to the many, many problems surrounding food insecurity. It's not just about pure agriculture. So we applied this uh, in our small-scale irrigation innovation lab project that uh, we conducted in Africa, also funded by USAID, where we introduced solar power pumps to farmers, as well as a mathematical models uh, that were tools that would teach them uh, when to irrigate their crops to better conserve natural resources, not waste the water. So this not only helped their crop and livestock production businesses with over 30,000 hectares being properly irrigated, helping 6,000 households increase their incomes, but the women in the farms, the partners to their husbands, began to grow fruits and vegetables at home because they had now more time to dedicate to their family, which significantly increased the nutritional health of their family's diets. Amazing. Well, Dr. Borlaug expressed to many just how important it was to raise the next generation hunger fighters. So, education. So we have done many projects at the Institute that focus specifically on that, such as programs we've conducted in Kyrgyzstan and East Timor, implementing what we call the Junior Master Gardener concept in schools that teach young people how to grow valuable crops teaching them entrepreneurship in the process. Well, last but certainly not least, Dr. Borlaug taught us that the most important thing we can do is to take it to the farmer. In other words, it doesn't help if all the knowledge we gain working on solving problems in the lab is not transferred to the end users. After all, we're supposed to help people directly, as you remember he said. 
So every project that we have implemented and continue to implement at the Borlaug Institute definitely focuses on this, such as a project that we conducted in the Democratic Republic of the Congo a few years ago, where we trained soldiers to become trainers of farmers, mainly women farmers, in nearby villages, helping them produce livestock and crops efficiently so they could feed their families and make money from the sales of their products. So ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Norman Borlaug is my inspiration. Uh, not a day goes by that we don't mention his name at the Institute, mainly because we often ask ourselves, what would Norm do? What would Norm say in specific situations? So one thing definitely is for sure. We need to not let the dream die, as he said to me. Um, as really, uh, the dream is to do everything we can to provide the means for people to reach their full potential. And it all starts with having adequate food for all mankind, which was one of his main uh, objectives. So our journey together, me and Dr. Borlaug, continues. Uh, we often say at the Borlaug Institute that we know that he's looking down at us, telling us, hey, act more, talk less, El Samarano. Get to work, my people. Indeed, we need to get to work, to continue to do all we can for humanity. So long live Dr. Borlaug's legacy, and long live his dream. Thank you all very much for your attention.